Hello, uh, this is machine learning made easy with the new release of Mathematica 11. I'm currently running it, Mathematica 11.0, and this is machine learning made easy with Mathematica 11. Uh, I'm Shamsai from Shamsai Research at .wordpress.com, and today I'm just going to be taking you through some of the functions and really, really basic machine learning capabilities of Mathematica. And with these capabilities, you can do some pretty amazing things. Um, just just for playing around. So let's start by I'm just having what machine learning is, right? So machine learning, machine learning, which I should be running Alt Seven. If you guys don't know, it changes to text. Machine learning is where when is when a computer is when a computer learns from a model or data, right? So um, this is this is here. Let me just show you guys this here. Um, so machine learning can do a lot, right? So it can it can recognize cats and dogs from images, as, as seen here. It can pre predict economic time series, right? So given past data, right? Given past data from May to September, it can predict how the stock, I think in this case, will do in the future. Um, it can translate, as we've seen with Google Translate, and um, in, it, it can also find missing values and create um, so given a picture with a hole in it it can fill, fill in the hole using the data points on the outside and this is this is pretty simple uh, machine learning applied to images also it can detect an anomalies data clustering compression but that's all um, very 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 far advanced and all of these examples come from the Mathematica uh, documentation so Right now, we're just going to go basics. This is for the starters in machine learning, and just to get exposure to the new Mathematica 11 machine learning capabilities. Okay, so let's let's, let's go further on. So let's start with the most basic function. Uh, there's plenty of functions around. Um, I'd say 12 functions that Mathematica has with machine learning. All, obviously, a bunch of options in those functions. Let me just paste them all here to get a taste of what we'll do um, this 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 time around. So yes, there's classify and predict, cluster classify, feature extraction, dimension reduction, find distribution, find formula, Im image identify, classify and predict, like I said before, and a lot more, a lot more. So we're going to start with these two, because they're the most simple. Find distribution and find a formula. So let's, let, let's just take some data that's of, some, of, that's of equal distribution. So here we go. I'm just taking um, a distribution, exponential distribution here with a normal distribution. This should be pretty simple um, functions in Mathematica. If you mean, if you don't know what they are, again, F1 pulls up the documentation. Um, it's, it's just, it just takes a simple value here, you just plug it in, um, and you get a distribution, an exponential distribution in this case. And I mean, again, I'm not going to go over these, this, these functions in this video. Um, and if you want to know more about them, F1, or again, question mark, exponential distribution, and you get what you plug in. This is a really easy way. But anyway, so we have this distribution. Let me have the value suppressed, the semicolon here. And then I'm going to virilize this data, right? So um, I, I, I'm, I don't know what's in this data. I'm going to make it random. And by, by the way, I really think virilize should be a word. So, you know. So let's just take uh, some of this data. Uh, let's see, just let's see all of it. Okay, so it's it's a bunch, a bunch of numbers, right? So um, randomly sorted. I, I can see no real pattern. Um, let's 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 make a plot of this. Just to, just make a histogram of this, just for kicks. And here we go. Um, this histogram is taking in the data and it's, it's giving us the first 30 values here. Um, with showing the data plotted on uh, a, a simple bar chart. So, as we can see, there's, there's this distribution we see here, right? So, it's, it's almost like a bell curve in here, and a half bell curve here. So, we can find this really easily without doing m very much math using Mathematica. What we use is this new machine learning function, the one I was talking about before, up here, the find distribution. So, we just plug it in, Find distribution of data takes a while, but then we get this. Um, this gives us 
basically what Mathematica thinks we plugged in to get this data, right? So we we, we, we plugged in 0.3, Mathematica outputs 0.33. They think we put 0.33 in. That's pretty close. And you can see these other values are very, very close as well. So now let's let's plot it too so that we can get a, a visualization of this data. Let me run this. Let me show it on the histogram. And look at this. We have uh, this line that really, really matches up with the data. Um, again, it's coming from these values here, which Mathematica predicted. This is this is a simple version of the predict function, which we'll look at later on today. Um, so that's fine distribution. It's very helpful for um, if you have a bunch of data, that data that, that you think um, lies on this distribution, this curve, but you really don't want to do the math to because um, you don't know if it's there or if it's not. Just plug it into fine distribution, and Mathematica should be able to do it for you. And the next one is very similar. It's find formula. So let's again let's create some random data. Data. Here we go. Um, suppressed outputs, and let's create a list plot of this data. You know what it's going to look like. It's a bunch of random numbers that look sort of like this, right? So I just list plot of the data. Let me run that again. List list plot of data, um, and you just get some random numbers. And when you being a data analyst when I see this kind of thing uh, this curve I know there's a pattern right even even here I know there's a pattern but most of the time I'm just too lazy right I mean I can do the math sure I can do the math I can do the the, the, the error standard error all that stuff but it's really really simple if you just put it in to Mathematica so f is equal to find formula find formula of the data for x right so we're solving for this X variable that we think um, it's it's on. We run that. Takes a second, and what it outputs is this. This is this is quite interesting. This is what it thinks um, this this curve is on almost right. So it's um, this this constant here plus this clo close to one actually, right? Close to one x sine of two x, and as you can see here, it's x sine two x. So. Mathematica's almost got it on the mark, on the bar. And we just put that on the list, on the plot again. Let's see that. And again, Mathematica nails it without doing any math, just a couple of characters right here. Um, how many characters is that? 10 characters. And you have the, the formula that. So data, data isn't random anymore, right? We just created this on, on, a, on a simple table, right? You can now quantify data really simply and put it into a formula, put it into a distribution without doing much math at all. And and that's really the power of Mathematica, right? To simplify math for those of us that can do a lot with it. Okay, so here come the bigger functions. So the first function we're going to use here is called classify. Let me just have a small example here. Um, what classify does is it given a data set, right? So the, here is a data set. So we're telling it one should go to A, two should go to A, three should go to B, four should go to B, and let me just put in one more. Five, five should go to B. So here we use this arrow, which we've created by typing the hash, not the hash, the hyphen, and then the greater than sign, which creates the arrow. And so we have this, right? So the what the classify function is doing is, let me pull up the documentation. It generates a classifier function, right? So it's ge generating another function, basically, based on the examples and classes given. So, based on these examples, right? Based on one a one is equal to a, two is equal to a, three is equal to b, four is equal to b. It's creating a classifier. So, we we can let me just show you, right? So we run that, and now we have the classifier function, right? Which is under c. So what this classifier function is, it you can, when you plug it in, when you plug in any numerical data, right, numerical features, it, given five training examples, it can basically classify. So, let's try C of 2.4 A. And it, it's A because, again, it's closer to 2, so it's thinking, oh, again, this is really small example, just a basic example. Um, and we can see the probabilities, right? So, if you do T 2.4 comma probabilities, again, um, probabilities... Again, um, 
Let me spell that right. So we can see that it thought it was A, like 99.9% .9 of the chance, and B, pretty low, less than 1%. So it, 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 even given a small data set, it can tell a lot. And predict, again, predict is very similar to cla cla classify, and I'm, I'm not going to get into it right now, um, but we're getting to that next. So let's try some big things with classify. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but Mathematica 11 also comes with a very very nifty um, nifty function called service connect and right now I'm connecting to Bing search I am I should be connected should be okay uh, let me just connect here okay so I'm now connected to Bing search and this gives me access to like basically all Bing right I can look up anything so let's take some of these things so let me give me some give me some things um Animals, animals. Let's give it that data data set. Animal is equal to um, what do I want? A lion. I want a lion. I want a uh, tiger. I want some um, goats. I want um, hmm. Sorry, I want a unicorn. I want a. That's not an animal, is it? Whatever. Um, and I want. Uh, let's just take four of them now. You know, keep it simple. Let's suppress that output. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull, this is pretty cool actually, I'm gonna pull some pictures of these animals from Bing. Let me pull this up real fast. Um, okay, just give me a second here. There we go. Okay, and let me just change these animal image. And this should be animal. Yeah, I'm just copying this from a previous lecture, so please be patient. Animal image. So let's run that. Oh, my bad. Let's run that. So right now what it's doing, it's calling the Bing API and pulling pictures, right? Images, max item 40, so 40 images of these four animals, right? So what we're going to do is, using these four animals, using these... Uh, 40 times 4, 160. Using these 160 pictures, I will pull out some things. One second. So while it's calling pictures, let me go on. What we will be doing here, we'll be creating what's called a training set. So in machine learning, a training set is a set which you run on for the first first couple of um, pictures, right? For the first couple of pictures, you run the training set and on this training set you're basically teaching the computer okay this is a lion this is a tiger this is a goat basically like uh, a little kid with flashcards one plus one two plus two multiplication tables um, basically like that right we're training the kid to know what to do and to like almost classify these things so when a kid sees one plus one he knows it's two uh, and then we're gonna test him right so it's a quiz because I mean how do we know if the kid's learning anything if we don't test him so then we use the the other half of the images, right? So 21 to the to 40. Um, we use the other half to try to test the kids a quiz. So how how well is he learning the the material? So let's run that right now. Let's take the oh my bad. Let's take the animal image. Animal. So what we're doing here is we're setting this training set, right? The training set over here. We're putting it to the animal. So if it's a picture of a lion, right? When, when we called it from Bing, we called Lion. So we're going to put it to Lion, right? Um, let me take a... Let's do that. Run that. Okay, and then animal image here. Animal image. And now we create... Okay, runs. Run. Okay, now let's see. Let's run that. We all ran that. That, that was all good. Now let's run this. So now we're... Again, we're... Um, basically giving a quiz to the kid see how much he learned see how much more he can learn see how see if we need more data if we need, need more flashcards for this kid um, and basically it's, a, it's like a pop quiz basically and later we'll be checking the accuracy of CM which will be a classified measurement again we got it right so uh, it gives us the accuracy already but just for show yes you can call the accuracy 0.93 points 90% which is pretty good pretty good so um, 
we, we can see where it went wrong too. So uh, if we put in plenty of properties of CM, but if we put in this right here, what's called a confusion matrix plot, we can see where it messed up, right? So we can see where the kid needs to improve, right? Maybe where we need to put some more data in, um, give us more flashcards, right? It's like a kid learning math, learning any like learning a language, almost Spanish, right? So we know his goat is a goat, right? So uh, door or um, oh my gosh, my Spanish is really shaky. Let's say um, hola is hello, right? So it can say hola is hello. Goat is a goat. It gives an Im Im image of goat and it predicts it's goat. Yeah, that's right. But given an image of goat, it thought it was a unicorn. So given hola, it thought it was goodbye, right? So um, we can see here where it got confused. And this is pretty interesting, right? So we have um, goats looking like unicorns. We have lions looking like unicorns. Well, apparently unicorns are pretty common. We have unicorns looking like goats. Well then, okay. So that's just that's just a taste, really, of what 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 classify can do, right? So um, I encourage you guys to um, before we go on to the next video which you should definitely go on the next video and subscribe and give it a like too but before you go on to the next video play around with this right it's, it's very very interesting use this Bing search it's really handy if you want some example data um, change all the animals right maybe you have what I'm actually trying to do right now is I'm using actors right so how does one actor look like another right so I'm taking Kevin Bacon and Tom Hanks right um, and seeing it's a computer can analyze their faces really because I mean they look pretty alike to me I mean not to me but to a, to a computer right um, and just playing around right I mean there's a lot you can do with just this simple function that you weren't able to do before so play around with that but again like the video subscribe and go on to the next video because we'll be doing a lot more machine learning after that